guys, welcome back. So first of all, happy new year, 2023. A lot of things going on here in my shop. And in December, I finally, finally, <laughs> this took forever, got my degree. So I now have my degree in, a, in applied sciences and my major in radiation, my minor in American history. That was a huge, huge task to get done, but I'm proud to say I did it. And as a result for the last year or two, while I was really focusing on getting that degree done, uh, I put a lot of stuff off to the side with my 3D printers. And, you know, I mentioned in past videos where I was working on BB-8, I like to work on 3PO and Iron Man and some other stuff. I just didn't have the time. <laughs> just life was busy, too much going on. But every now and then I would see sales or specials or deals available for various printers that I wanted to upgrade down the road. Uh, for example, my CR-10s. You know, those originally came with 8-bit boards. I knew I wanted to bring them into the fold with newer ones. Uh, I acquired some larger printers. I scored some really good deals on Facebook Marketplace. So uh, let me give you a brief shop tour and show you some of the things I'm working on because if you have a bunch of printers or a printer like I have, uh, you may be interested in some of the uh, upgrade paths that I'm taking. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. All about 3D printing, cosplay. I've done all kinds of fun stuff. I've built a full-size aluminum R2-D2. I've got a Batman suit, a Stormtrooper suit. I'm, I've got a bunch of interests. I've really never grown up. This is good. So if you've never seen my stuff before, make sure you become a subscriber by hitting the button down below. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. So that said, let me talk to you about some of the upgrades I'm doing. First and foremost, the most important thing that I started doing in the last year and a half has been safety upgrades. So that's been twofold. That's been enclosing the printers. So we're dealing with a controlled environment for printing, which has been a, a huge boon to my printing. I'm getting a lot less fails. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is fume extraction or dealing with the VOCs, nanoparticles that these materials off gas, because uh, they all do. So. Uh, on most of these enclosures, I have either carbon filters or I have a BOFA uh, fume extractor. It's a very expensive device. They're about 700 bucks. Uh, I'd like to have something more central where everything's venting outside, but again, that's on the to-do list. Uh, and then the other thing that's been very important is having a fire safety system, okay? Because this is located in my home, so if there's some sort of grandiose <laughs> malfunction or whatever, I want to do whatever I can do at that local level to knock down the fire. I mean, I don't print unattended. Uh, I make sure that I'm nearby or within the house or whatever, but uh, and these weren't terribly expensive upgrades. I use blaze cut inside the top of the enclosure so that if something does happen, it will rupture that pressurized tube and, and take care of the fire uh, inside the enclosure. So just just a little bit of, you know, what what's your house worth or your apartment worth? And, you know, with the fume extraction, you know, what's your health worth? So uh, that's what I've done. I've had to kind of add some more space because the enclosures take up more space. But the other thing that I have noticed is that I've also invested in a filament dryer. And what I do is before I do any print, they run through the dryer and then they go into a filament dry box. And this way I am minimizing the amount of time that that filament is exposed to moisture. And one of the great things I've noticed about that as well is that my prints look so much better because there've been so many times where I've been chasing, is it over extruding, under extruding? What am I doing wrong? It's just that the filament had moisture in it. So what I'm trying to do <laughs> by drying and by controlling the environment, uh, I'm using less filament because I'm having less fails and just getting better results. Okay, so let's talk about printers. So on my desk right here, this is a CR10S. I got this probably five years ago and I have three of these and I picked up two through Facebook Marketplace because <laughs> it was a classic case of husband bought it, wife found out, <laughs> husband had to sell it. And what I've been doing to my CR10s is hot end wise, they've all been converted to the Bontech DDS, which has been uh, improved to the DDX series. But uh, I picked up several of these. And the reason I like the Bontech solution is because it covers three important things. You're getting a reliable hot end, you're getting a reliable part fan cooler setup, and you have the BL touch mount all set up. I've seen a lot of different designs on Thingiverse and printables, what have you, but a great deal of them, the part cooling fan is an afterthought, the BL touch is an afterthought. So what I like about the Bontech solution is that it's all in one. 
So the other thing that's been done is I invested early into the Wham Bam uh, surfaces, and these have been fantastic. I've had no issues with these whatsoever. I tried a few other PEI, uh, PEIs. I've tried BillTac and some others, and they just didn't hold up, and, or they just didn't last. Um, there was a few times I tried the inexpensive one, and that just bit me in the rear end. The prints wouldn't release, or if they did release, part of the PEI would come off. So the Wham Bam, I have not had that issue with whatsoever. Next up was the electronics. Now the original CR10, um, I have one of those. I was upgraded to a CR10S. They're all 8-bit boards. They all have the simple LCD screen and they all had their quirks. So one of the things that I wanted to do is I came across the SKR Mini E3 and these came out last year and they have, it's a 32-bit board. It's got two 209 dryer, uh, drivers. Uh, it has a very big heat sink on here, and it's supposed to be a plug-in replacement for the CR10 and for the Ender 3 or Ender 2s or what have you, and it is. Uh, when you place this board in place of the original one, the USB and SD card line up perfectly. So I've been doing that. The other thing I've been doing is the Big Tree TFT35, E3 V3. This is a color touch screen. The other thing you can do is you can put this in Marlin mode, so if you prefer that, you can do that as well too. So you may think, why? Why are you wasting all this money upgrading a CR10 that probably works fine as it is? Well, first of all, this gives me the same hardware on all three CR10Ss that I have. The other thing is, is the 2209 drivers, so it's way quieter. And it's also with the extra processing power, and I have all kinds of inputs I'm, I'm not using at the moment right now. It gives me some flexibility if I want to add you know, uh, UPS and a remote shutdown if I want to use, you know, the NeoPixel or some other stuff. But the big thing is it's going to be quiet, it's going to be reliable, and all three of these machines are going to have the exact same hardware because previously one had a 2.0 board, a 2.1, one had a 2.1.1 something. So it's nice that these guys are going to have all the same hardware. So if I need to update firmware, they're all identical. And the last part of this was you know, doing this upgrade gave me an opportunity to do some maintenance on these CR10s. The dual lead screws, I was able to go through there and, and clean them and lubricate them. I was able to check all the belts. The electronics box, they're notorious for being very loud, not because of the electronics, but because of the fans. And I do have some quieter fans available that I could place in them, but my thought right now is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> I've done it, I've, I spent enough money on these. If the fans are working, that's great. But getting inside the box and checking everything has been good too. So that's part of the CR10S family of upgrades. And now, the big guys. Okay, these are the two big guys. These are the CR10S fives. So this is a 500 by 500 by 500. Big printers, and I have two of them. Yeah, one I purchased from an individual, another one I, I picked up through uh, Facebook Marketplace. This machine is completely stock right now. The only thing I've changed is I just installed a uh, Wham Bam Flex Sheet. The glass bed on this thing is huge. I mean, and this is a big bed to move back and forth. I'm trying to get away from the Y Slingers, but I got these guys at such a good price, it's hard to say no to them. So this machine is stock. This machine over here has the Bontech DDS, which is identical to what my other CR10s have. This is going to come off, and both of these machines are going to get the Bontech DDX uh, direct drive setup. That's going to also have a slice hot end. And what is that's going to do is, if we're going to be doing big prints, we want to use big nozzles. And those have very powerful heaters. Now, because the power around here likes to go brown every now and then, or we get the flickers, behind there, you'll see two little black boxes. Those are 1,500 watt uh, battery backup UPSs. Now with the bed heaters plugged in, I don't know how long they would last, but as long as they give me a minute or two, <laughs> I'm good with that. The other change I will be making is each of these has the stock 12 volt power supply. The Montech DDX setup uses a 24 volt heater, fan, everything. Uh, I could use a buck converter, but just let's just put 24 volts in there. So two power supplies are going in and you can see I got the boards over here and the screens. I also have the synchronization belts for these lead screws so we can make sure they stay in sync. The other thing that's going on is this one has the SSR on a appropriately rated uh, heat sink uh, on the outside. It's been removed from the frame. I want to do the same thing to this one. This way the SSR uh, is going to a great big giant and cooled heat sink. So both of those will have that done. 
Another thing I picked up is I picked up the, uh, uh, these are the brace kits that Creality sells. So basically a brace would go from here to here just to steady this to make sure it doesn't wobble. Uh, pretty inexpensive upgrade. And the last part of this, and I got to say for this, is these guys will be getting their own enclosures. 3D Upfitter makes giant acrylic enclosures that will fit the CR10 S5. And then all I have to do is put that together. Again, I got to work on some sort of way, um, either using a carbon air filter setup. Uh, I'd like to do some sort of central tubing system where uh, the VOCs and nanoparticles are going out of the house, probably through a vent. Uh, and then that's just about it. And the only other thing I need to add to this would be uh, at the top of the enclosure, the uh, fire tube, again, just in case. Uh, something goes on badly in here, uh, this fire suppression installed. So. These are the two big guys, and uh, <laughs> they should be fun. Uh, I haven't done any printing on either of them. Uh, as you can see, all these extension cables makes it kind of a challenge to get these guys, uh, get their cables organized, because when things are moving around, you don't want to snag the cable. So uh, I have high hopes for these. I have some very large prints I want to do, and I'm hoping uh, with the upgrades I'm doing, these guys will be printing champs. All right, so this right here, this is an Arion Thinker S. I have one of these and I have a Thinker SE and essentially the only difference between one and the other was one came with a PEI surface, one came with a glass bed. And one of the problems with the Thinker has been they don't have eccentric nuts in here. Um, they just have these spacers. In some cases uh, they're welded in and when they're not. And so what happens is that uh, this gantry likes to get out of whack rather easily. So. Uh, one of the upgrades I'll be doing to this guy is removing these solid spacers, cutting them out, and putting eccentric nuts in there because these are good printers. They, they do a very good job, but um, again, <laughs> you know, if you're always having to square up that gantry, it does have two lead screws, so how it gets out of sync is fascinating. Both machines do it. Uh, Electronic-wise, they've been really good. I've had really no major issues, but it's very frustrating when after every print, one side's higher than the other, and I... <laughs> baffled how it does it. Uh, I thought about doing the uh, like a belt across here to do a sink, but I think the biggest thing to do was definitely make it show, so I can and tighten those up. Um, this hot end is terrible. Um, Arion, for whatever reason, on the hot end, uh, where the thermosistor goes in, the silicone sock holds it in place. There's no set screw that holds it or whatever. So there's a lot of, the, the ER20 is the same way too. Uh, it's just, they went as cheap as possible building this machine. And the, the structure and bones itself are, are quite good. So we're gonna get rid of the hot end. Again, I'm using we, sorry. I'm gonna get rid of the hot end, the extruder. This is gonna go away. I bought several of the uh, Bontech DDSs as backups and spare parts uh, for my CR10s. And I think this is gonna be a great instance where these can go in here too. This is a 24 volt system, so that should make it fairly easy. But uh, this is coming out and this surface is okay. I have a couple spare uh, wham bam sheets, but uh, I think I'll put one of those on here too. And of course, these are gonna go inside enclosures as well. So should be an interesting project. Uh, gonna have to bore out the hole here um, and do some construction to make the uh, eccentric nut fit in there properly. But I think these, these two machines that I have have great potential to be better than they are. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is another of those uh, situations where uh, you buy a printer and someone says, here, take this one too. Uh, this is a CR10 Mini and I have the control box. Uh, it has a very unusual bed size and I'm finding them <laughs> wham bam doesn't stock that particular size. So I'll have to store something, but you know, it's just a little machine. It probably has the same print volume as an Ultimaker and such. Uh, so what I did is I made my own homemade DDS. This is basically from the Thinker, um, Thingiverse files that make it. And I have it all wired up and set to go. Uh, I just need to do something with a control box, probably again, using that SKR Mini E3 platform. But uh, yeah, this is one of those machines where there was really nothing wrong with it. I didn't have the heart to chuck it. So uh, that's also on the list of upgrades. Okay, many moons ago, I put together the Fulvertech FT6. And I got parts everywhere here. And I've done some nice upgrades to it and it's been doing some okay prints. The one issue that's persistently a problem is this melamine. Now the good news is down below, I have replacement parts for this. So I have a new aluminum bed and I have a, a new aluminum bed holder uh, for this. And He's also, 713 Maker is gonna be offering some more upgrade parts for this. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is he offers some 
definitely some improvements as far as how the bottom goes together and these uh, sides. The other thing I want to do is, I don't know what the source was for these linear rails, but they just capture, I'm always pulling you know, rust or gunk out of them. So uh, I think I'd like to go over some Ziltec linear rails to upgrade this machine to. Now, the, the one caveat of a, of a printer kit is, especially with T-nuts, is over time they can work their way loose. So I have a couple spots here where the T-nuts have failed and I got parts falling down. Uh, here, here again. Another part falling down. So essentially, this machine needs a tear down and a rebuild and some improvements. Now, the electronics in the back of this guy, I'm trying to think, I think it's an MKS 1.4. And again, very loud, old driver. So it would also benefit from something with an SKR, for example. Um, this has a Titan Aero hot end, and that's worked well. I haven't had too many troubles with the Titan. The only problem with the Titan is I think it's jammed up. It's not a lot of fun to take this apart and put back together. So this might be a situation where either a Bontech, an E3D combination, or even a, a Hemera uh, might be a good solution to upgrading that. Now, to make this even more fun is a friend of mine had one of these and said, I, I give up on it, take it away. So I have two of these now. So, <laughs> you know, this is what happens when people find out you're into 3D printing. If they give up on it, they just either want to sell it to you or, you know what, just take it. So, uh, and I can't say no to a deal sometimes. So, uh, so there are two of these FT5s, R1s that I have. So there's great potential. Again, this isn't a Y slinger, so it could do some really good prints, but it just needs to be stiffened up, put an enclosure on it, get a reliable hot end, some decent electronics. Um, so that's basically everything, right? Um, and then next to it, I have the uh, Focatec i3, and that printer is a CR10 clone kind of thing, uh, only it has the motors up top rather than on the bottom. It, it's an interesting printer. Um, I don't really know what to do with it. Um, it has potential, but it needs a complete redo. So yeah, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what's going on with the uh, FT5R1. Okay, down below, this is a TAS 6. Uh, a friend of mine just said, look, make it go away. Uh, it was not working. And it came with the stock tool head. Yeah, tool head, yeah. Stock tool head. Uh, it also included the uh, um, hardened steel 1.2 nozzle. Uh, it's basically a Titan Arrow uh, package, what these uh, tool heads are. Now, the problem I found after doing a lot of debugging was two twofold. Uh, on the back of this hot end, the TAS uses, it reads the electricity basically by touching these four metal contacts uh, to figure out how level it is. It's not using any kind of BL touch or probe sensor, it's measuring voltage. And this thing kept on crashing. And after doing a lot of work, I discovered down on the back of the nozzle, there's a tab where a wire is connected and that wire was broken. So once I got that wire plugged in, gee, she was going through and doing this leveling and, and actually doing some printing. But there was a second problem. Um, you can probably not see here, but anyway, uh, this right here is the nut. The nut should be in the back. So what happened is these are 3D printed parts. So what happened is that this 3D printed part is, it has a, a brass insert inside and I don't know who did it, but when they when they threaded something in here, they threaded it in so tight that it spun the brass fitting. So no matter what I've tried doing, heating, reheating, um, that, that this back piece here is just fused in there. So I have a replacement. I got to unbolt everything, bolt in a new one. Um, this surface is definitely a little iffy. So a couple of things. So again, this machine is super loud. I mean, this was like the machine to have in 2016 because no one was printing or making printers that had this kind of build volume. So <laughs> it's a very loud, and I think they're the Alpha 4098 drivers. The things that I want to do to this thing is I want to replace this bed surface with Wham Bam. So I have that right here. I also have a hot box from Wham Bam. And it looks like based on the measurements, this would be a perfect enclosure to surround this. Now, when I get to this project, I'll verify because uh, Wham Bam would love to know, hey, this, does, that fit? does that fit the TAS? Now, the other thing is this uses 2.85 filament. This hot end, I've just had terrible luck with. The uh, hardened steel 1.2, it's really good at jamming, that's about it. So what I did is I purchased, they have this M175. Uh, basically, it is a Bontech and Slice uh, Mosquito hot end, and it uses 1.75 millimeter filament, which I have tons of. So my goal is to fix this back plate, install the universal mount, install this guy, new bed, possible enclosure, and hopefully get this guy printing. 
Okay, about two years ago, this is the newer reel. It's called the M18S, and uh, it's a 300 by 300 by 400 printer, and you know, it's got the ribbon cable, and as you can see, uh, it's gonna remind you of another printer that's been out lately. The Fuquist Odin. <laughs> What's remarkable, let me zoom in here, is how similar they are. So, uh, the only difference between the two of them is the print volume. So it's been kind of interesting when this came out and the big hype was it's foldable, well, whatever. Uh, both of them suffer from the same problem. It is essentially the same problem on both as this hot end. It's a very cheap extruder and a hot end, and it's very prone to jamming if you use the process on the control uh, to unload filament. Essentially what it's doing is it unloads too fast. So it winds up shredding the filament inside the extruder and the only way to get in there and clean all that is to take everything apart. The other thing is that, you know, this has a, a set pin in here to remove this hot end. Some of them have the PTFE, some of them don't. So it's just, you know, this was one of those sub $300 printers that was supposed to be, wow, we really impressive. And, you know, I took advantage of, I put a wham bam on here, put the BL touch. And this Odin has just been a total fail everywhere. Uh, a couple things between the jamming, which is, is a clogzilla. Uh, the other thing this thing would do, even after doing a BL touch, you know, uh, a mesh and, and probing and print, the next time you'd go to print, the Z offset would be all over the place. So something's going on with these motors where it's dropping or something. Um, and again, you, know, you get these spare belts. So let me spin this back around over here. So what I would like to do, I think Sovel uses this size rail for their hot end. So I think to make this machine uh, a better machine would be to get rid of that hot end, get rid of the ribbon cable, just direct wire to the board, and you know, get, <laughs> again, I don't know what the size of this carriage would be or this rail, but uh, definitely if there was a, a new hot end, you know, part cooling fan, BL touch mount, uh, that could be slapped on that rail. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> you needed to design a carriage that would fit all that, obviously. But again, this machine, especially with the print volume, has really good potential. And I've got this machine very well tuned at this point where it's been doing some very large prints for me. Uh, I'm talking like, you know, two or three day long, you know, Iron Man prints. So, uh, so that would be great here. Uh, as far as this little guy, I'm, I'm not sure what the fix is for that. I, I'm at the point now where I just don't use it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy about the bed slingers anymore. <laughs> I get so many of them. But uh, again, you know, whatever would be a replacement for the newer reel would definitely fit on this guy. So uh, I'm still looking for ideas. So it's, it's on the bucket list. Okay, this is my drawing station. Let me move some stuff around here. So if there was a secret to my success I would give as far as 3D printing, it's this. This is the Print Dry Pro. I'm sure there are other dryers out there, but this is probably the best one I've seen. And what I like about it is it's easy. I mean, you just set the temperature that you want, and there's a guide in the book as well, too. Your manufacturer for your various materials will let you know what the best drying temperature is. Um, what I do in all my materials is before printing, whether it's brand new in the package or not, it goes in the dryer for two or three hours. And then when I'm done, I have these poly boxes. So essentially I've got room for two giant, spool, two spools or a giant spool uh, under those giant packs of desiccant. The material would sit in here. Now you got openings here for your Bowden tube or if you want to go to the top, you can do that. What I do is I have Capricorn tubing going from inside of here through the enclosure top into the hot end directly. And this way, what I've done is I've reduced the ability of my material to soak in a lot of humidity because I'm, I'm controlling that environment. So what I found is through my, my experience with printing is that I'm not chasing as many weird problems that could be blamed on moisture. So this is one of my, <laughs> I wish I had done this sooner because of all the fails and all the times I was trying to figure out am I over or under extruding? No, this is, so this is a really good investment. There'll be links down in the description if you're interested in, in, in finding out more about these and as well as the dry boxes. But uh, that's what I have on all my machines. That's my process. We do the same thing at work in, in the world of professional 3D printing. We're always drawing our materials before use. So, and the same thing with storage. I have the cereal boxes. I have print dry, uh, make steel containers. So I have those as well too. Or if you're in a pinch, I got the gallon size hefty bags. So the only thing I got to do is store them high because my cat loves to chew on plastic. Okay, so that's the shop tour. What do you think? 
In the comment section, if you have any of these machines and you've done some interesting upgrades, let me know. I'd be curious what you think or what you think of the upgrades I'm doing. So that's it for this time. I thank you guys for watching. Again, if you're not a subscriber, become one. And if you want to see what I'm up to, I post a lot of stuff on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So definitely check me out on social media. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Print safely.